terms of effective load monitoring, I guess, do you want to sort of open up in what does load monitoring mean to yourself, I guess, from a perspective of, let's say, a sports scientist going into a new sport um, at a new club? Uh, what are some sort of key fundamentals to, to uh, understand uh, to put good practices in place, do you think? Sure, yeah. And, and I can talk on this in like a holistic uh, sense, but I can also go down and drill down to the one foot view uh, if you want as well. Um, yeah, I guess, sure. yeah, for me, uh, you know, I was really fortunate um, when I first got to the Eagles. I, uh, we, you know, the owner there is is really big on if, uh, you know, the, all the owners in NFL teams are billionaires, right? So that money's not really a thing. Um, and it's, you know, if, if they have like a certain thing that they uh, that they like and, and kind of sports science and uh, uh, progressing, being really progressive in approaches was something that uh, the owner of the Eagles was really passionate about. So you know we we had a bunch of different methodologies uh, and and you know went from HRV uh, every day, uh, specific gravity testing every day, you know weigh in every day, nutrition stuff every day, um, questionnaires. Uh, force plates, GPS. You mentioned a couple of, so MBI and then gravity testing, two terms I haven't heard of before. Oh, urine-specific urine specific gravity, uh, like USG, uh, uh, you know, P test. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, right. And then modif modified RSI, uh, reactive strength index, um, it's just a measure of, you can measure it as a neuro neuromuscular fatigue. Uh, so for us, we would basically look at, uh, ha has that change from, uh, or what has the change been from the week? Uh, or from the game, and then is the person fatigued or not, uh, and then how do we manipulate that for their session? So, um, yeah, one thing that you know we we used Hawken at uh, and, and at, uh, at Philly, and uh, one thing I love about the system uh, is there's a traffic light system. So basically, if it's if it, if there are two standard deviations down, it goes red, uh, and you can say, okay, um, all right, hey, let's do another test now again, and and they go again. Yep, it's red. All right, great. Let's let's go over to the uh, medical team, um, have a quick chat about what the progression is. What are some other uh, challenges that you faced along the way, and some practical tips for I guess practitioners to have some awareness around? Yeah, I mean, I think if we just hit the reporting side of things, I think um, I think having reporting that uh, you know one page report, right? Everyone should be doing one page reports. Keep it really simple. Doing dot points, things that are simple to read and understand, uh, but then also setting out reports in a way that um, has a flow uh, and a and a um, kind of a process of reading and and, uh, and being able to download the information. So maybe it starts with like the team information at the top, and then it goes down into the positional information and then individual information. So like, how, how does your report flow and go? And then how, if you're doing graphs, make the graphs apply to what the data is saying as well. So if you're looking at a volume metric, let's use a bar graph. So that's basically like a cup filling up. Um, it's a it's a volumetric bar graph. Practical tips, I guess, for sports scientists starting out and yeah, that want to work in pro sport or perhaps are currently working in pro sport and looking to yeah. make a bigger um, impact. You know, time time is really valuable, um, and, and not to underestimate that your time is valuable, uh, and and just like being present, right? Like if if you are lucky enough to get an internship or to uh, you know be around for a certain amount of time. Be there longer, you know. Like that, there's something about giving up your time and showing that you're dedicated uh, that will get you a job uh, doing that, or at least put you in good stead. Because sometimes it might not be the job at that actual place, but when someone calls them and asks, "Hey, what's James like?" and they go, "Hey, I mean, he's raw. He's learning the way uh, in terms of football and what he's doing." Um, but man, he was around all the time, always helped, always willing to ask questions. He'd take out the, like the rubbish and the trash if he needed to, like he was just there helping at all times. Like that is enough to, to get a job in this industry, especially. What are some key metrics you mentioned, uh, I suppose you mid thigh pull, something that you like to look at. Uh, what are some other areas that you like to look at, um, whether it be from jump testing or, or just for, for general athlete development? Sure. Yeah. I mean, um, I think that's a great question. It's like, uh, you know, you know, what's, what's your end goal, right? And that's that's kind of where I, like, start is, like, what's the reason why? Like, why do you want to test? Um, I think there's, like, a few different areas you can go. I think we've talked about you can look at fatigue. Uh, you can look at, like, professional, like, performance development um, or athlete development um, and progression over time. Um, and then you can also look at, like, the player development side of things. And um, I would just look at, like, you know, volume, intensity, frequency, right? Like, how frequent are you testing? Um, and then when you... The frequency of testing is going to dictate what you look at. So, um, from a fatigue 
side of things, like modified RSI is fantastic, um, but it also uh, needs to be something that you're doing frequently, like once a week, uh, twice a week, something that you can um, really track that uh, quite diligent, diligently over time. 